How about we go to my parents' place for Christmas this year? That was the beginning, and it was also the beginning of the end. My name is Amy, a 35-year-old housewife. I met my husband, Neil, at work. Right after we got married, we were blessed with our lovely daughter, Nora, and I quit my job. This was the first time we went to visit Neil's distant hometown since our daughter turned six. Marla's voice echoed through the room. Hey, is dinner not ready yet? I was scrambling around as I replied. Yes, Marla, just a little bit longer. My mother-in-law sighed deeply. <sighs> You're so slow. Neil, how do you put up with a wife like this? Well, you know. Other wives are much more on top of things. I really hate how slow she is. What did you say? And do you have the nerve to say that while you're just lounging around watching TV? I was about to retort when Marla's words hit me. Once you're done with breakfast, you need to clean the yard. After that, organize the storage room. Then, clear out the outdoor shed. It's supposed to be Christmas. The one time of the year when it's okay to relax... So why am I being worked to the bone? And it's so annoying that my husband is still just lazing around. By the time I managed to finish all the chores I was tasked with, I was utterly exhausted and couldn't move. I collapsed in the living room. Oh my gosh, I'm so tired. Marla immediately commanded. Who said you could rest? Get started on lunch now. But I've been moving around this whole time. Let me rest for a bit. A wife is basically like a maid. You think you can just sit around and not work? Get to work. But the countryside where my husband's family lives is, for better or worse, still clinging to old traditions. A wife belongs to her husband's family home. It seems old-fashioned attitudes persist. But even in the old days, wives weren't worked this hard. Can you help me out here? I asked Neil. No way, he quickly replied. My husband does nothing at home, and even less so when he's at his parents. He basically becomes a lazy drinker. He hasn't moved from his spot since the morning. Hey, I want to go buy some groceries. Yeah, go ahead. Help me. I insisted. The grocery store in the countryside is far. Neil, who has a driver's license, had already started drinking in the morning, and I don't have one. Walking there is the only option, but a 30-minute walk one way is too much to handle alone. When I asked him at least to carry the bags, he frowned. No way. He answered immediately again. I felt like throwing a chicken at his face. It would probably be a hassle to clean off. While I was imagining this, my husband casually swung a beer can. I just drank it, Neil said, sounding robotic. I am drunk. So what? I cannot. So, in other words, he doesn't want to go. Fine, jackass. As I was getting irritated, Marley yelled from behind me. Is dinner not ready yet? Ugh, enough. I'll buy a ton of sweets. Let them eat and get fat. Phew. Finally back. I sighed after the grueling 30-minute walk each way, hands full of bags. I stumbled back to my in-law's house, barely standing. Sitting down at the entrance, I let out a heavy sigh. Phew. That's when it happened. Hurry up. You're just like your mother, so slow. I'm sorry. Hearing Marla scolding and my daughter's apology made me feel like a robot running on reserve power. Forgetting all my fatigue, I sprung up and dashed toward the source of the voices. I stomped over my still loafing husband on my way. I thought I heard a pathetic oof, but ignored it. I headed to the kitchen. What are you doing? I couldn't help but yell, catching my mother-in-law and daughter's attention at once. Oh, Mom. So, you finally decided to come back, Marla said, seeing me. My daughter's eyes were filled with tears, while Marla sat there smugly. What are you doing? I asked again. Marla snorted. 
My daughter was holding a pot and lid. Why? Nora, sweetie, what are you doing? Nora stuttered out. Um, Grandma said she was hungry and told me to make something. She said to start with soup, so I got the pot. My goodness, she can't even boil water. What a useless granddaughter. What are you teaching her? The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, I guess. Are you really my son's child? I couldn't hold back when she insulted my daughter. Marla, she's only six. Asking such a young kid to make soup? She might know how, but surely you can do it. To treat your own granddaughter like this? Marla's face turned red as she shrieked. What are you saying? Making an old woman work? What a horrible woman you are. Listen here, a wife is a maid. It's natural for you to work without complaint, and a maid's daughter is also a maid. A maid? After all, who do you think you're living off of? You're living off the money my son works hard to earn. Respecting your husband and me is only proper. Stop complaining and work, maid. Marla yelled, before storming out of the kitchen. I was so taken aback by her outburst that I couldn't respond. Words just failed me. She apparently went to the living room where my husband was. I could hear their voices talking. Your wife is pretty useless, isn't she? Less than a maid, I'd say. Come on, Nora will be more helpful as she grows. Just a little patience. You must be struggling, son. You know... You can always come back home if you want. You mean, get a divorce? That's an idea, but you know, a maid is handy to have around. Hey, how about we move in together? I've been fed up with my job anyway. Let her handle the work, and I can enjoy a laid-back life in the countryside. What did my husband just say? His horrifying statement sent chills down my spine. Oh, that sounds lovely. I stood there, frozen clenching my fists until I felt a gentle warmth cover my hand. Mom? It was Nora. I slowly looked down at her. She was looking up at me, concern written all over her face. I crouched down to her eye level and spoke softly. Hey, sweetheart. Yeah? Do you like Daddy? Um. She couldn't answer right away, which made sense. Neil was indifferent to parenting. He would come home from work and hardly talk to Nora, preferring to lounge on the sofa, watching TV, or messing with his phone. Weekends meant late nights out drinking. With the pandemic, he started drinking at home until late into the night. Hangovers became a routine. Long weekends were spent lazing at home or going out with friends. Family outings were rare, if ever. When was the last time we went out together? This family trip to visit his parents was the first in months. No, years. Neil probably doesn't even know what class Nora is in at preschool, let alone her likes and dislikes, or what she wants to be when she grows up. I doubt he knows she's starting elementary school next year. No wonder she can't say she likes her father. It was to be expected. Then, I started. Do you like Grandma? No. She replied instantly. The immediate response made me chuckle. No surprise there, after the way she'd been treated. But then, Nora said something unexpected. Because Grandma bullies you. It's supposed to be Christmas, but you haven't had any time to relax. You're always being told to do this or that. Grandma is mean. Children see more than we think. Well, it was pretty obvious with all the orders being thrown around. I asked her, smiling despite the situation. Sweetie, do you want to live with Grandma? She shook her head. Do you want Daddy around? No. Her quick response was brilliant. And with that, my decision was made. The next day, Nora and I spent the whole day out. By the time we returned to my in-law's house, it was already night. Marla and Neil were waiting, visibly irritated. Finally back, huh? What were you doing? Just out? I dodged his question. Marla scoffed. This is the problem with young wives these days. That's it. You're officially the maid. Hey, maid, I'm hungry. Where's my dinner and coffee? He 
the ever-commanding Marla. I silently served them coffee. Neil reached for his mug, but I swiftly took it from him. Huh? What the hell? He looked puzzled. I dumped the coffee right over his head. Ah! What are you doing? Don't worry, it's cooled down. That's not the point. Stop it. I poured a generous amount of coffee over him, dodging his reaching hand and placing the mug down. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Acting like this when you're just a maid. Marla raged, her anger plain to see. Shut up. I'm not your maid or anything else. I retorted fiercely. She tried to stand and yell back, but I cut her off. What? She exclaimed. A son's wife is not a maid. If you didn't know, let me tell you. I am not a maid. I pressed on, leaving Marla speechless. She opened and closed her mouth, unable to find words. I glanced at her, foaming at the mouth, and leaned in close. Marla let out a shrill cry, but I didn't back down, getting within a few inches of her face. Listen, and listen well. There's no system in this world that says you can use your daughter-in-law however you like. I'm here to protect my family, but I'm not here to be a servant. But, but, but I'm your husband's mother. We're family. You should protect me. Listen to my orders. Are you out of your frigging mind? If I were a real maid, I wouldn't be family. Why would a family member take orders from you? I replied calmly, keeping my cool. Marla's face, once pale, was now bright red. You! What kind of way is that to speak to me? You speak horribly to me, so I'm talking to you the same way. Who do you think you are? I'm your mother-in-law. Save it for your dreams, I said, having reached my limit. I had been patient, incredibly patient, but enough was enough. There's a limit to everything, and Neil and Marla's attitudes finally broke down my patience. And what exactly do you think your granddaughter is? A maid? Treating your own granddaughter like a maid? Enough with this nonsense already. I leaned in closer, and Marla's face turned pale again. Scared, huh? Pathetic. All that arrogance, and she crumbles with just a bit of pushback. I was taken aback by her superficiality. I pulled back, narrowing my eyes in disgust. Marla, now pale, was trembling slightly. Seeing this, I turned my attention to another person. Now, it's your turn. Y yes Neil replied in a pitiful voice. I glared at him fiercely. Your wife and daughter are being treated like maids, and what are you doing about it? Uh, I was... on my phone. And then? Drinking beer. So, you're enjoying your drinks while your wife and daughter are treated like maids? How nice. Sorry. Sure you are. Ah! Neil let out a pathetic scream as I yelled at him, and then he ran to hide behind Marla. Seriously? I was so disgusted by their pathetic behavior that I decided to get straight to the point and handed him a piece of paper. Just sign this now. What is this? Neil peeked out from behind Marla, like a puppy peeking out from its mother. As soon as he realized what the document was, his face went completely pale. The divorce paper? What the hell is this? We're getting divorced, and I won't be coming back here ever again. Marla and Neil both opened their mouths in shock at my words. I waved the paper in front of them. I've already filled out my part. Just write your part quickly. I'm submitting it to the office after Christmas. That's a fake document. The office is closed. You couldn't have prepared it. Too bad for you. Divorce papers can be downloaded from the internet. In fact, they'll accept it if I bring it in today. Neil shook his head, almost in tears, refusing to sign. No, I don't want a divorce. You're troubled by the thought of me leaving? Yes. Because having me around to do everything for you has been helpful. Yes. So having a maid like me around makes life easier for you, and that's why you want to avoid a divorce. Yes. No, wait. 
That's not what I meant. Gotcha. <sighs> Deja vu. It felt like just moments ago that Neil was screaming at my furious expression. Well, if he won't sign, I might as well get a professional involved. Whether you sign or not, I'm getting a divorce. I've already told my parents. Nora? Yes, Mom. Are you ready? I've packed all my stuff. Nora peeked out, holding up her bag. Oh, are you going somewhere? Neil asked, noticing the luggage. I turned around, holding my own bags. Good question. We're going back to my parents' house. Hey, don't be stupid. The only one being and having been stupid is you. I didn't do anything stupid. You brought us here to be treated like maids. This is ridiculous. We'll discuss the divorce formally with a lawyer. Goodbye. Having said my piece, I headed for the door with my daughter, Neil following us desperately. Wait, you can't live without my paycheck. At his words, I stopped and turned around slowly. Have you forgotten? What? I used to out-earn and outrank you. I quit my job because of the pregnancy, but even then I was earning more than you do now. Neil turned pale. Had he forgotten we worked at the same place? Convenient memory. I plan to slowly get back to work with my parents' support. I'll be staying with my parents for a while. I'll start working again, and even if I don't earn as much as before, I'll manage. No, I'll make it work. Neil was almost in tears. I'm sorry. I'll change. Just please don't divorce me. You had many chances to change, but you wasted them. It's too late for regrets. With that, I reached for the door. That's when Marla shouted, Wait! Until now silent, Marla now looked troubled as I turned back irritably. What now? What about my dinner? Who cares? I shouted back, and this time, we really did leave. My daughter and I went straight to my parents' house, where they welcomed us with open smiles. My, my, what a tough Christmas you've had, my mom said, inviting us inside. Nora's smile returned, a relief spreading over her face. What a Christmas adventure. Hopefully next year will be more peaceful. The discussions with Neil, who kept saying he didn't want a divorce, were difficult. But considering facts like my daughter's refusal to see her father, the divorce was eventually finalized, including a lump sum for child support. I couldn't trust that man. As a result, we sold the condo where we lived, and Neil apparently went back to live with his parents. One day, my ex-husband called to complain, saying, Mom's not doing anything. Actually, it's gotten worse. It seems the neighbors had seen me being overworked and word of our divorce spread quickly through the grapevine typical of rural areas. As a result, my former mother-in-law is now getting cold stares from those neighbors. That makes sense. No matter how rural the setting, calling your daughter-in-law a maid is just not acceptable. It's severely outdated. Because of this, Marla, who started staying indoors more, has become even more irritable, treating her son like a servant. He was venting on the phone about their daily arguments. I wasn't interested in their drama. I planned to tell him that I had confirmed the child support payment and then hang up. You reap what you sow, I said coldly. I could almost visualize him on the verge of tears on the other end. Come on, can't you help out a little? I'm Nora's dad, and she's her grandma. To that, I smiled, though he couldn't see it, and said, I just drank it. What's with the tone? I am drunk. Hey. I cannot. Hey, I was wrong, okay? As if I'd help you. I yelled and hung up the phone. I blocked his number right after. Laughter is the best medicine, and I couldn't stop laughing for a while after that. Thank you for listening to my story.